Hello and welcome to another special episode of Frankfurt English News. My name is Boris Tiromakov and today we will continue with our quest to understand who is running for mayor in the upcoming Frankfurt Oberbürgermeisterwahl on Sunday. Last time we took a look at the three favorites to win the race, but there are still another 17 candidates, some of which might have what it takes to produce an upset and win it. Today we'll be taking a look at the candidates that possess significant political firepower and shouldn't be counted out of the race. There is significant political power linked to the position of mayor in a city like Frankfurt because it's so huge and it makes no surprise that all big political parties want to win it. We'll be taking a look at all the candidates that big parties endorse in order of their poll position. Daniela Mella Würzbach is running for Die Linke, which literally translates as the left. The 38-year-old city councillor is an advisor at Goethe University and was unanimously nominated as her party's candidate for the mayor elections. Die Linke can be tracked back through a series of transformations all the way to the party that ruled East Germany, the Socialist Unity Party. Well, the times have changed, obviously, and so has much of the policy, but still expect some strong democratic socialist ideas and an emphasis on solidarity. Ms. Mela Würzbach speaks of a social and ecological restructuring of the city, but her ideas amount to a general policy shift on almost all subjects. Her thoughts on housing fly under the banner of, I quote, affordable rents instead of luxury neighborhoods, unquote, and propose a rent freeze and relentless action against speculative vacancies. She would also like to see more land under the direct control of the municipality. Mela Würzbach campaigns for the creation of more housing for people with average or low incomes. In that sense, she supports construction of the new district along the A5, but is split over the decision with environmental concerns. Security-wise, Ms. Mela Würzbach has been following the debate and propositions about the Bahnhof district and says that you can't, I quote, free people from addiction with a snap of your fingers, end quote. She rejects a no-weapon zone because she says that this will allow police to search people without initial suspicion on grounds of, I quote, racial profiling, unquote. She is against more video surveillance and opposes tougher action against beggars. In her words, I quote, the fight for security is strengthening migrant, feminist, queer, and anti-fascist organizing, end quote. This is a strong position on an increasingly difficult debate because doing nothing to improve the Bahnhof district security is obviously hindering the city, socially, economically, and not the least, nationally and internationally. Being associated with a massive inner city drug network is obviously reducing the city's prestige and might have dire consequences if left unchecked. However, city security is just one aspect of running for mayor. And it's no surprise that Die Linke and Mela Würzbach are taking a stance that emphasizes solidarity, as solidarity is one of the pillars of modern democracy. Let's carry on with the next candidate. Das geht an alle Frankfurter. He is simply the right person for the job. 50 year old Jan Kipiusun is running for the FDP, or the Free Democrats Party. He is a member of state parliament and works under the slogan Transparency has a name. He wants to improve Frankfurt as a city of opportunities. The FDP is a liberal party that has existed ever since before World War II. They consider themselves to be center or center right, an advocate for a free market and privatization. They are part of the Bundestag ruling coalition, but have recently seen a drop in public opinion polls. Jan Kipusun says he will work for affordable housing in Frankfurt and will push for the development of the new district along the A5. According to his calculations, that will create around 15,000 homes. He rejects the building of subsidized housing and instead would support housing subsidies. I know it sounds the same, but it is quite different. With subsidized housing, housing is built with a subsidy in exchange for the right of people with low incomes to live in the housing once it is finished. Whereas with housing subsidies, subsidies are given to people with low income to live in a housing that was built independently. Pusun wants to create a diverse landscape of world-class education in all schools. He is not too specific about achieving this goal and mentions expanding school social work and digitalizing and renovating aging educational buildings. In terms of security in the Bahnhof district, Pusun takes a moderate stance and supports a no-weapon zone while also rejecting more video surveillance. He says that only police presence creates security and that police should take stronger action against organized begging structures. There is a curious story about Mr. Puzun that I would like to share with you. In the height of the campaign for mayor, 
photos started circulating the media of Mr. Puzun's vehicle parked on a space reserved for disabled people in the underground garage of the state parliament. Mr. Piozun confirmed that it was indeed him who parked the vehicle there, as he was running late for a plenary session and there were no other spaces available, and said he would usually always look for alternatives. Now technically, the garage is reserved for members of parliament on plenary session days, but Yanki Piozun is the spokesman for disability policy. Mr. Piozun said that those spaces are often occupied because the underground parking is too small for everyone. But it's a curious story indeed. Anyway, on to the next one. Andreas Lobenstein is a 56-year-old bank employee who was unanimously nominated by Alternative für Deutschland, or AfD, to run for mayor. And his campaign is... underwhelming, for the lack of a better word. AfD are widely regarded as a radical right-wing populist party. They follow soft Eurosceptic policy and are now the fifth biggest party in the Bundestag. Now I'm gonna let you judge the success of Mr. Lobenstein's campaign video. By the way, there isn't much else to judge. Eigentlich liebe ich diese Stadt. In this jewel of cinematography, Mr. Lobenstein says he loves Frankfurt. He grew up in the city and went to see Eintracht play. To prove that, he sings a famous fan chant. After that, he critiques the mobility policy that has developed bike lanes that are too wide, resulting in traffic jams and fewer parking spaces. He then heavily critiques poverty migration. That is not just in the Bahnhof district, it's just that there it's most recognizable. On the topic of industry, he says that there are plenty of places to spend money, but not enough opportunities to make money. He says there is so much to do for security, cleanliness and finances. I quote, do you believe that those who created the problems will solve them? Not really, right? End quote. This is Mr. Lobenstein's campaign. His party's general popularity and leverage put him amongst the candidates with significant firepower. But honestly, I don't really see him pulling an upset. And that's a wrap for today. We're slowly but steadily moving through all the candidates and we'll soon have a full picture of the pre-election landscape in Frankfurt. Next time, we'll be taking a look at some local city mascots who might not win the election, but have already won some love. The sources that we use to create this video are available in the description below. The German word of the day is Einfluss, and it means leverage. And if you want to win, there is no greater leverage than the truth. Thank you for being with us. Good night and good luck.